Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth, where I talk to artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. Uh, today, I have a very special guest with me, Victoria Baylor. She's the founder of Victoria Baylor Leadership and Organizational Development Solutions. Uh, but basically, she's a coach, and she's had a profound impact in my life. And if you're, uh, if you're a listener, a regular listener, you may have noticed we have not put out an episode in, in over a year. And uh, Victoria is partly responsible for that, <laughs> but, but not for bad reasons. Um, what happened was I met Victoria through, first she came to a session with the Savannah JCs in Savannah, Georgia, and she spoke basically about um, building, uh, building your own personal brand to put yourself out there um, in the you know social sphere and in the community and basically to advertise the way you want to be perceived by people in the public. And I, I found her speech and the rest of the JCs found her speech very interesting and informative. And after that, I kept running into Victoria at different public events, different speaking events. Uh, I even saw her on uh, the, the big screen in church on Mother's Day. And oh, so, yeah. so yeah, so finally I uh, decided that, hey, I, I, we should uh, set something up. So I went through what, what the, at the time was called the Shine Program, uh, and, and you were focusing mostly on coaching women at the time. Um, but but, uh, but it, it, like I said in the beginning, it had a profound impact on my life. Uh, you changed my life for the better. And uh, and um, w and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But first, I just wanted to say thank you for coming on. And um, could you give us a little overview of basically what you do and what services you offer? Sure, sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got a little nervous there uh, for a second, Tyler. I thought I was going to have a whole bunch of people come beat me up <laughs> as the reason for your your pause there for a second. But you explained it well. Um, so no, who I am, what I do, um, you know, that's always the loaded question to answer. And I remember a time in my life where that was a very difficult question to answer. And identity is huge. But what I, I like to consider myself almost like a people polisher in a way. Um, I, I joke with people, I say I polish diamonds for a living. Um, but I work in the sphere of leadership development and organizational development. And sometimes people hear those words and they get a little bit nervous and they're like, you know, leadership, oh my gosh, it's so regimented. And you now I'm on the other side of that, the other end of the spectrum. Um, leadership is all about the way in which we influence others and the capabilities and strengths we have to do that. So my job is to help people connect to those strengths, capabilities, to see the gaps that keep them from being connected internally to those components and keeps them from really reaching their strategic goals individually and in organizations. So I have this team pleasure of going to, uh, well, working with individual leaders or oftentimes high level leaders of organizations, companies, um, and helping them kind of steer their people in a way that's going to be beneficial for the movement and the goals that they want to attain. So that could do that could be um, centered around anything from just improving communication, um, navigating conflict, learning how to collaborate better. A lot of those interpersonal people kind of skills that are super, super essential. So I do that and um, I love doing executive coaching. So I work with higher level people and do managerial coaching. And then I do consulting. So I have a past history in uh, micro microbial ecology research where I would take um, obviously like the scientific method and figure out what were, what is the root causes of issues where well, I'm able to take that in the human behavior umbrella under that umbrella and actually determine what's going on, what are some of the root causes of those challenges, how do we alleviate those or what's going right and how do we do more of it? So it's a real cool kind of way to use my science background in um, helping connect people better. And then I speak on it too. So um, I'm not out there to bore anybody. I love giving really great uh, exciting kind of talks on topics that people tend to kind of glaze over and get, <laughs> get depressed about. And I give people a new way of thinking about them. So that's that's me in a nutshell. I live in Savannah, Georgia, technically pooler. I've been here for about 25 years, uh, military brat. I live with my husband and daughter and I just love Savannah and it's a very hard place to leave. So you mentioned your science background. What was kind of the path of you know different career or life stepping stones that led you to want to become a coach? Oh, gosh. Well, I think like anything, which I tell my clients, um, we all have this gold thread that runs through our lives that is uh, kind of like a common theme. And I've always been interested in what happens on a deeper level 
So in my first part of my life, it was the ocean. So I went from marine biology when I was like eight and I got hit, struck with lightning in a sense, fell in love with the field, but it really was that need, this desire of how I'm wired to understand things on a deeper level. Um, so that's kind of what got me started there. But I realized later on in that trajectory, it really wasn't the uh, biological science in a sense of you know the microbial side of things. I've really been intrigued with people. So I've been a coach, believe it or not. They know you called it that. I've actually been one, it feels like all my life, I've always been the person that people pulled aside and talked to. I was fortunate enough to have uh, very wise people in my life pouring into me. And I just have always had an ability to feel people's emotions, sense where they're at, see sometimes what isn't always clear for them um, and coach in that capacity. And one thing I would say about coaching is it's not counseling, it's not therapy. Coaching is just all about being able to see a scope and be able to ask type of questions to give sight for other people. So people are actually empowered themselves to find the solutions they need. They just oftentimes need the right focus question to guide them there. And that's what I love doing is just walking side by side with someone, supporting them. My job is not to lead, guide, tug or pull. People are not broken. People are insanely brilliant. I see that. And my job is to help them get over that dark spot into a, a better place for themselves. Um, you mentioned some of the wise people in your life. Um, can you th can you think of a person or people that acted as kind of a coach or mentor to you and maybe some of the lessons you learned? Oh, of course. Well, it started in my household. My, my two parents, I uh, had a stay at home mom who was um, pretty amazing. Uh, she's the kind of mom that would like talk all the time while she was folding towels and, you know, we got stuck folding towels with her. But I was always absorbing the things that she said. And she just had such, even though she was a stay at home mom, she, you know, and she was in the military before that, she just has such life experiences that I was always receptive to. And they really helped keep me out of a lot of negative situations, just the wisdom that she shared that she witnessed in other situations. Um, my dad as well, loved him. I always joke that was my first boyfriend, uh, loved him to pieces. And um, he taught me a lot about life and how to be treated as a woman and, and you know, gives that sense of security as fathers do. So I appreciated that. Um, I live in a world of books, so I'm a nonstop learner, always love school. I, I could be a, I consider myself a perpetual student. So I have more um, coaches and mentors than I can count. But as far as my trajectory up until now, I've been blessed to have people I've come alongside. I've met um, mentors. I feel like God placed in my life. Um, I think I have like two coaches, a mentor now. I always tell people never trust a coach who does not have a coach themselves because uh, we all have blind spots. And one person who doesn't get a lot of recognition, I joke with him about it, but my husband is actually one of my greatest mentors. Um, he's my best friend for one when I'm not driving him crazy. Um, but he has this way with people. He's always been extremely good with people. And he has this... Uh, He's just like a magnet and he has this way of making people feel really special and knowing things about them and connecting them, them to uh, the mission that people just love to follow him. And it was such it's always such an inspiration to watch his move. And I think through osmosis, I might have picked up some of that. I'm not going to tell him that. Well, I'll tell him, but, you know, <laughs> so, so maybe that's his golden thread. <laughs> he's yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's yeah, he's phenomenal. And. One of the downsides, I wouldn't call it a downside because I love it, feels like Christmas, is if I have a conversation with someone long enough, I can see their golden thread. So I always get excited about people because their patterns start to emerge and you can see their strengths and what they're good at. And I love that because I think it's so normal for us. Every single person are used to doing something and they don't realize their own capabilities sometimes or sometimes they forget it's really great to be reminded that, hey, you're pretty remarkable. Not everyone can do it like you do it. Leverage that, right? Um, so I also, I too have uh, read many books. I've read all the big business books. I even uh, went to school for business. And so I, when I went off on my own to become an entrepreneur, I, I thought I knew everything I needed to know. And what I hadn't focused on was that personal, emotional side, spiritual side of business. And, uh, you know, I had even read Start With Why, but, you know, Simon Sinek, but, uh, but it was going through the Shine program for me that really got me to focus on what's important to me 
And that process was a little bit about, you know, better understanding my personality type. But for me, the biggest takeaway, and it was therapeutic, as you mentioned, it did feel therapeutic because you're kind of like a, an unbiased third party. Uh, unlike my mom's going to say, yeah, 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 go do that. No matter what I, you know, if I want to pick up some new crazy new career, she'll be like, yeah, go for it. Um, Cause she's biased. She's my mom. She's going to support me no matter what. So uh, f- just speaking with you, uh, like I mentioned, the biggest takeaway for me was those limiting thoughts. Um, but, but you did kind of have a process and we're talking about five, one hour zoom calls a week apart. We're talking about five hours on zoom and it changed the whole trajectory of my life, my business, my career. I mean, it was again, huge, profound, um, impact on my life. So could you kind of talk about like, if somebody does do this, I know that on your site, you advertise a basically a complimentary consulting session. What does a personal one-on-one coaching um, program look like? Oh, that's a good question. I think the greatest thing about any personal one-on-one coaching program is that it's completely uh, customized to the person, the individual. Now, what you're referring to is um, my Clarity to Shine program, which is all about uh, developing one's personal brand. And it really starts at I like to say at the heart of the matter, because anybody have a personal brand. That's who you are, what people know you for, the impressions you make. You can totally manufacture that. I mean, people act all the time. But this is really about authentically connecting to oneself so you can authentically connect to other people. And that gateway of transference of um, knowledge, information, and credibility gets built. So for what a person can expect through that is, um, it all comes down to what I think is so important and kind of the, I would say the foundation on which I build everything off of, which is confidentiality for one and trust, honor, and respect. Um, I see, again, I can't say this enough, you know, sometimes people are a little bit leery of coaches and I totally get that and I respect that. But to me, people don't come in missing anything. They just can't see what's there. So, you know, when I accept someone or welcome them in, they have my fullest confidence. They don't ever have to worry about anything being said. Uh, Most people don't even know I work with different people. And it's weird being out in public when someone says it, because I'm like iron jaw, (laughs) I say nothing. So there's a confidentiality piece. And then there's the listening piece, which is huge. So having a, um, you know, consultation and working with them is, you know, spending those first session or so, getting a good sense for what's going on in their life. Where are they at? What are their desires? What is the gap between present state, future state? And I'm just gathering the puzzle pieces. That's all I'm doing is listening, listen, gathering puzzle pieces, asking questions. And then we move on into the building phase. Um, So I do do executive coaching, which is a little bit different. That can be so many different reasons to do that. So I have different pathways. Uh, The Shine program is pretty neat because it, for me, like you said, it doesn't take long to get clear on yourself. You just have to know where to look. So I tell my clients all the time, I was like, oh, that's easy. I feel like Harriet Tubman will take you to freedom. That's, <laughs> that's not the problem. Um, but what's really neat is, though, is the steps that are you know, pretty much taken. Like you said, looking at what's blocking you from seeing. Where is it that you want to go? What tools do you have to work with? So it's a way in which I arrange that whole program and what I'm able to hear from someone and help bring out is what empowers them at the very end. And I love your story so much and it, it, I'm so honored by it, but you know, all those components you had in you and just sometimes we all need that. And I think what most people don't realize my TEDx talk is based off of the same thing. You are who you are, not what you do. I was my first client. So I went through a period where I got stuck and I got lost and I had to go back to the fundamentals. And because I am very analytical and I'm very, I notice things, I started on me first. And I really feel like God gave me the blueprint that would help other people. And I said, oh, there's other people out there dealing with the same issue. Sometimes the confidence, loss, figuring out what's happening next. What do I have to work with? And I take, um, I empathize with that deeply. And I feel that, but I empathize in a way that helps bring people out of what they may feel like is a pit and carry them to another um, higher position. And it's it's such a great place to be there because I know what that's like personally. And I love to see people experience that. Another another huge takeaway, you, and you mentioned it twice, you, you said that people aren't broken and that they already have all the pieces that they maybe they haven't discovered them yet. And so for me, 
Uh, yeah, it was kind of this limiting thought of, of, you know, about specifically for me, like money and relationships. Uh, it's like, you know, it's never going to come to me. It'll happen to other people, but it'll never, it'll never happen to me. And so now as I'm saying this, still single ladies, but, uh, but I had this kind of thought that like, I'll never find the right person for me, for my fit, you know, my, you know. And it was a limiting thought. And um, so, and now I basically know that even if I'm not whole in my, in my heart and my spirit in my soul, I can get there and I will get there and I'm taking steps to get there. So another specific thing that I, that I did as a result of the shine program was I had uh, opened up an office um, and I was trying to build a team of, of, people to do video production. I had the podcast and I was volunteering a lot of places. And I came to you with like this large burden of, of responsibilities that I, and expectations I put on myself. And you helped me to just basically let go of some of that stuff. So I, I, um, I decided I, I always kind of knew that I didn't want to grow this large production company of people, everything else, but I was just doing it because that's what you're supposed to do. I've read all that's what I read in all the business books. <laughs> you got to scale and you know hire people and everything else. And so um, I ended up closing down my office, shutting down the podcast, leaving some of the responsibilities I had at the time um, as far as far as volunteerism and such and just really focusing on myself um, spiritually uh, health like health has been a big thing in the last year and then the last one was I said I, I have the perfect schedule I, I don't set an alarm I wake up I drink my coffee my cold brew whatever uh, and I work when I want uh, you know sometimes I work late sometimes I work weekends but for the most part I make my own schedule it's great. The only thing I, I would like to do is see my family more. And so I decided, oh, I want to go up to New York. I want to do this documentary about my grandparents, but it might take me five years. And so w- working with you to remove these limiting thoughts, it's like, well, why five years? Well, I need a certain amount of money. Well, how much money do you need? Uh, not that much. Oh, well, like, can you make that much? Yeah, I probably could. Mm-hmm. You know, could you, could you find people up there to, to pay you? It's like, Oh, the only reason I didn't do it is because I, um, I thought in my mind that I, I couldn't do it. So it, it wasn't even a confidence thing. I just had like complete blinders on. Um, so can you think of uh, like the, can you see the aha moment in people where they're like, oh, oh yeah, I, like this thing that seems like the peak of Mount Kilimanjaro is like right in front of me. And um you know, it's for me. It was like a moment. I was like, "Oh my gosh, I have to change a lot in my life," but it's right there. Like that is the best part for me. That is the icing on the cake. Um, because uh, you know, it's like anything. It's like pressure washing a house. You can't really see the beauty of things if you don't clear off the dirt, right? We all have life is life, and we pick up all these negative thoughts and. Um, ideas and notions and they just kind of stick to us and one thing i did fail to mention is um part of my certification and training as a coach and consultant is in um neuro-linguistic programming so you know i have the leadership bit i have the organization development but the lens that i look out of it all of them at or both of those things is do um the neuro-linguistic programming lens so that has to do a lot to do with mindset the, what we think see believe our attitudes toward things and most of them are just subconscious so, you know, and that's a whole conversation for another day, but most people don't realize that, you know, we're only 5% consciously aware of our thoughts. The 95% are subconscious. So what do you think about those negative subconscious beliefs that are hiding beneath the surface and driving actions that we really don't even know are there? So sometimes it takes challenging those. And that's where a really good coach is helpful. And I love you know, all the great, great coaching in the world will never help <laughs> if somebody's not receptive and are ready to take action. I think that's one thing I love about you is that like we did the work together and then you're like, oh, how am I going to step into this? And you stepped out and made it happen. And I think that's what life is. We, we, you got to maximize the moment and make the best of it. And I think that's so important. But I think realizing that we have these challenges 
being more mindful about what could be getting in my way and being more willing to ask questions of ourselves versus wearing the weight and the burden of the insecurity or the doubt or the whatever the challenge may be, um, it'll go a long way in helping clear off some of that heaviness that holds us back from the greatest potential we all have. So at the time when I, f I first started working with you, you were much more focused on working with women specifically, and you've kind of pivoted now to to be open to everyone as well as a uh, organizational development and coaching. Um, what first, why did you have an emphasis on women? I know you were also, I mean, this is like, this could be a multi-part question. I know you've been a speaker at She Hustles and, um, you know, are, are do women need our different or more or, you know, different type of coaching than, than maybe you experienced with me and what led to kind of the decision to open yourself up to, you know, anybody and um, organizations and businesses? Oh, that's a really good question. Oh, man, I wonder if I think I'm consciously aware of the answer. There's some subconscious elements to that, I imagine. But um, I started primarily with women because I'm very sensitive to some of the needs that women have. And I think, um, you know, data really shows it. You know, a lot of women are caretakers. Um, they bear the responsibility of that. And then they're also, you know, I think, what is the data on women building businesses? There's more of them that are launching businesses each and every day. So there's not a lot of resources and help sometimes to help women navigate all these multidimensional roles. And then there's pressures that come with that. And then there's the emotional side and the physical um, stress. And so I think I was really sensitive to being a high performing woman myself, also a mother, business owner. I think at the time I had two businesses. Um, and I've been employed, I was employed for 15 years. So I could just really see the weight and the toll that I was taking, um, not only through my story. So I definitely wanted to put um, feelers out for them and kind of be a safety net. But at the same time, it's so hilarious. I never advertised for men, but I always got men um, because they too have the same challenges. So, you know, I know the challenges may be different and it may look a little different, but everyone struggles with mindset. So. As I began to progress in my business um, and then leadership began to be more of a focus, I figured like that was a divine pivot that I started to realize that, of course, there's organizations um, and companies where there's people not really feeling that connectedness. And then you have the disruption, one of the biggest disruptions called COVID-19. Oh, my God, that was enough to just kind of create some major, like I call it, um, earthquakes and the way in which people interacted. You know, there was fault lines at first, there was some slight cracks, but throw COVID in the mix, really broke some things apart. Um, and I, you know, started to really inventory my superpowers, which is just, again, being able to see the deeper need, I'm kind of being a sense of glue, um, being able to empathize and understand where everyone's at, and then being able to see, okay, enable them, like how do we get to the other side of this? And you realize that it's not really the hard skills that people need. I mean, people know their hard skills, you know, they're hired to do a job, but it's oftentimes the soft skills or those interpersonal dynamics that, you know, how do I communicate? <laughs> like I'm communicating on four different levels, you know, verbally, physically, body language, um, my tone is communication, even the way I'm communicating to myself about the situation. Like how do I process all that? So I make sure the output comes out in a way that can connect to the person with me. Um, how do we build as a team or collaborate together? So I'm still obviously um, expanding in those areas, but I started definitely coaching with women because I saw a huge need. And it was amazing how, especially with COVID, um, that year I had a huge surge because I found that oftentimes when things are normal, we just kind of are in our comfort zones and we don't do anything different. And COVID again was such a disruption that for a lot of women, they said, okay, I hadn't chose myself before and I can't really trust anything now because some of them have lost their jobs. Like I'm going to bet on myself. And I saw a lot of men do that as well. Um, so I am still in a mix with that. I work with business owners um, and then organizations and a little bit of everyone. But uh, if it comes down to really better, again, under gaining more of that leadership capability, influencing others and understanding how to do that well. And if it comes down to diagnosing and um, figuring out the needs, their specific needs of each organization and company now, I'm really open to um, just being a resource and support for them. Yeah, it's a it's a bet on yourself, uh, you know, to to leave your job during COVID. But part of that, it's also investing in yourself. And, and that's what I felt like working with you was for me was, 
was basically, okay, how do, you know, I have this idea, but how do I, you know, it, it's an investment in myself to basically level up where, where I want to go and be, just be more intentional with it. Um, so if, uh, can I say something real quick to course, that? And it's yeah. not a nod to me at all, no no self-promotion, but I totally agree with you there. And I find that with people, the hardest thing to invest in is themselves because they put a lot of value in what they do for other people. And I think it's, you know, not to use the airplane um, safety manual, but <laughs> we got to be a little bit more selfish. You know, you have to be able to oxygenate yourself, put your mask on first, because you can't really give to anybody out of depletion. So, I definitely want to encourage someone if you're teetering and you're on that space, you know, you're like, I know I need something, find what you need because the world is actually going to be a better place if you do it. Like I used to joke with my daughter when she was an infant, I was like, you, you want mommy to have like quiet time. <laughs> you want mommy to have, you know, like, you know, time to go off and be with other people because I know if I recharge my battery and I recharge my sense of well being, you can help other people and fulfill your own purpose. So, um, I think kudos to you is all an investment and I love investing in myself as well. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I know it's a thing on social media and stuff where people are, uh, you know, there's this whole thing about if you're a talented kid, you basically grow up to be an anxious adult because I didn't come up with this. I've just seen it on the internet. Um, there's just a lot of people who put a lot of pressure on themselves, uh, in our society. I, I have always been a high performer myself. Um, and sometimes like, you know, it, it, if it's not, it doesn't matter how efficient you are if you're not doing the right thing, if you're not being effective, right? Um, so yeah, just taking a step back, you know, you hear all these metaphors about being in the woods and it doesn't matter how fast you're chopping your way through the forest if you're not going the right direction and you don't even know where you are or where you want to get to. Good point, yeah, so. absolutely. No, and it, and it is, I think that's the, the biggest thing I always hear, which I like, because it makes me feel good. I like being able to help people depressurize. Because again, you, it's, it's just like even basic medicine. There's some operations you can't do until the swelling goes down. And I think we, we're in such a high pressure society and we're constantly having to make fast decisions. And there's so many implications and connections to those decisions that um, people start carrying this huge weight on their shoulders. That's just, it's a lot. So I totally agree with you. I think it's so important to just take that time and to start asking. I think one of the greatest questions to ask is to ask yourself, what is it that I want? Yeah, it's okay to it's okay to put your needs first when you're in that time of need. Of uh, you know, Maslow's hierarchy is a is a famous model for that kind of thing. And it, it does feel like you're letting people it, for me it felt like I was letting people down. Um but I I had to because I had to put myself first in, in some ways, um, you know, in order to recenter myself and align myself with where I want to be. And uh, it's okay to say no, you know, if, if, when you say no to one thing, you're saying yes to something else. So um, for, in, in your, for, <laughs> what's that? No is my favorite word, because you're absolutely right. No means that you have a better sense of your priorities and uh, I heard someone say on the, as a preacher the other day, he said, no's are, um, yeses are expensive. And you think about it, they are very expensive because then when an opportunity comes that's in full alignment with where you are and what you want to achieve, if your yeses are so stacked up, you have no room for another yes. So totally. you have to be very wise in using those yeses. Yeah, and I'm, my business isn't perfect, but I'm much more in line with where I want to go with the with the business. Um, so, in your forest, in your you know, in your path that you're carving out, do you have a grandiose like big picture goal of like you know someday I'd like my business to become X, or is it just kind of like a little bit at a time and see where like how does your how do you look forward and you know decide where you want to take this thing? With the, wow, knowledge well, that, that you, with the knowledge that you just did a pivot with your business. Um, <clears throat> well, you know, so I come from a different, I have a slightly different perspective and I don't, you know, in no way want to offend anyone. So my, my, and I respect everyone's beliefs. Uh, I think for me, my faith is really important on helping me kind of see the way my future runs. So, you know, for a long time, I knew I was kind of on the pathway, um, trying to really live out what I felt like were the plans God had for my life. Um, and it is, it, 
you know, sometimes during that time, you kind of can't see like, what could this potentially be? Um, but I really feel like where I'm at now is it. I am madly in love with the work I do. And, you know, if I could have anything, I would just love to expand that work. Um, you know, I love going into organizations, doing uh, these learning and development exercises and making it engaging and getting people to talk and never talk. I just have this way in which I can kind of disarm people and have them all feel like they're connecting. And I love, I, I just would continually do that. Um, you know, I'm an introvert by nature, so I am definitely not a, oh, look at me person. It's not about me. It's really about, um, like, learning and growing together, which I'm obsessed with. Um, if I had my way long term, I would love to have, like, a multi-million dollar management consulting firm that's, you know, local and it's global and, you know, be able to train other people that just be able to go in and work uh just so connected with an organization's mission, vision, and values, and um, just really help, uh, in some cases, resuscitate that heartbeat that, you know, sometimes can get a little bit low when you have the pressures of business or work or life or dynamics. Um, there's constantly stuff happening. I have to tell you as a business owner, you're constantly having to navigate that. And then that ripple effects oftentimes can pass throughout an organization. So just having someone around to kind of help sustain and um, support is what I love. So I would love to do that. I like to speak, so I love to travel to speak, love to be doing that even more internationally. And former TEDx I'm speaker. also a writer, I would say. You're a former TEDx speaker, actually. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And, you're, and you're a writer. <laughs> So I like, and I, I love books. I'm obsessed with enough and I spend enough money on them. So uh, I hope to at one time, this is, you know, I love audacious goals, love to be a New York Times bestseller author. Um, and because again, nothing we have is ours. Um, I'm not brilliant enough to have given this stuff to myself. I know where this stuff came from. I was um, given this stuff uh, through God and my purpose. And our goal in life, I have, I forget who says it. And I have the quote in my bedroom that says, our goal is to figure out what our gift is, to learn it. But the end goal is to give it back. So I feel like my life's mission is to give back from what I've experienced and to uh, catalyze other people and ignite them to do what they're called to do and then keep keep the gift rolling. Um, a friend asked me why I'm, what changed that I'm firing the podcast back up. And it's just that, uh, the calling, right? I uh, it it became it it started to feel like it was a uh, work, and um, and then I've left it on the shelf long enough that I'm like, I just have to. I, I don't know. I, I I have to like kind of spread that message a little bit. You know, talk to people. Um, so whether it's you or somebody else, but just we're re reiterating here. Why is it like beneficial to get out there and talk to a coach or mentor? Oh, gosh. You know, the people that do it always say, man, I wish I had done this sooner. Um, because uh, to be progressive and to be growing, it is so important to have clarity. Clarity is the most important thing. And life just kind of can shake things up and, you know, have people end up in a fog and they can lose that clarity. Uh, whether it's getting inputs from other people in situations we don't know where to go, go or do. And coaches are really good, again, at helping you stay focused on, you know, where it is you're trying to head to and then how to move as many obstacles out of the way in order to get there. So I love that. And, you know, I know everybody and their mama is saying that they're a coach. I get that a lot, you know, and, and I am so sorry for the people that think that it's just getting a sheet of paper and that's it. But really good coaches create the type of transformation. Like I, I remember I met with one person and um, we had four sessions together and then she went to run for a political office and got the seat, which was so awesome. Another woman, we had a few sessions together and she went in and asked for her um, boss for a $20,000 raise and got it on the spot. And then called me and she was like really stoked and panicked. And I was very calm. I said, well, you know, he always knew your value. You didn't know your value. So, you know, it's the amazing thing to have those kind of shifts. And I've experienced those in my own life that um, having a coach, having someone to just help boost you up and hold you accountable and be your cheerleader and at the same time show you <laughs> your blind spot, but doing it in a way that's so supportive is wonderful because we're not meant to traverse the terrain of life by ourselves. And if you're trying to go high, like hiking high, to use that analogy, you need a guide. And that's what coaches are. We help you navigate those uh, mountainous regions so you can summit in some of the best places possible. Um, 
one last little anecdote for me. I made the decision to go up to New York for four months to be with my family. And I uh, didn't think it was going to happen for another five years. I thought I'd do a month, two months, three months, four months. And I got pushed back from life, uh, from clients, from uh, friends yeah. down here in Savannah. You know, I built a life in Savannah. I've been here five years now. So to just uproot myself, you know, and then I'm still paying rent here. And so it wasn't easy. I had to, you know, shut down my office, stop my podcast, all sorts of stuff to make it happen. But at the end of it, I did it. <laughs> I, I was able to pay for it, so I, I got through it. And then I spent the whole summer with my grandmother, and the week before I came back to Savannah, she passed away, and I was right there with her when she passed. And it would not have been possible if it wasn't for you and, and, and going through your class. And there's no amount of money that can would ever make up for not being there with my family when that happened and, and having the extra time I wasn't expecting to get with her. Um, so I just, I'm so grateful for you and, 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 uh, yeah, it was absolutely life changing. And I, I, I I'm going to go back up this year, you know, whether people like it or not, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go spend the summer. Thinking up there with so. you. I'm going to be the 160 pound extra bag you're paying. <laughs> you're welcome anytime. Yeah. It's beautiful in the summer. It, it's, it's still snowing. They got two feet of snow yesterday, so don't go until May, but, uh, but it is beautiful, and you're welcome anytime um, to to come meet uh, mom and dad and, and the family. But um, f- let's give let's let uh, people uh, let's plug you specifically. If people want to um, uh, have you as a speaker, individual coach, coach their business, come in and, and 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 host a session, how can they find out more and and get in contact with you? Oh, very easy. I'm self-branded. So you can go to victoriabaylor.com. So www.victoriabaylor.com, like Baylor University. Um, if you go to like my main page and scroll down, you'll see a place where you can select to do a consultation uh, or a discovery call. Um, click that, input your information. I'll get right back with you. Uh, I go to a lot of events locally. So if you bump into me, please let's chat, talk. And I just like to speak to people anyway. So I'd love to get to know you, but um, I'm on Instagram, uh, Facebook, all the major platforms. And so, yes, I'm, I'm easy to find. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to close out the episode. Do you have any other last little words of advice for, uh, for people, Savannians or elsewhere? Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, I want to thank you so much. Um, you're, you know, everyone that I connect with inspires me, their strengths, their gifts. So yeah, I've always been inspired uh, by you and what you bring to the table. And I think if there's one thing I can say to close this out is that um, maybe this is a little bit of a dare or maybe a little provocation, but I want to say to each person that you haven't seen the greatest that you can do just yet. So, you know, you may be out there doing it and killing it, and I applaud you for it, but you'd be surprised what else is in your tool bag. So I encourage you to keep digging, keep striving. Um, Don't let the naysayers, the negativity, that 800 pound grill on your back, sometimes with doubt, I've had to deal with that, get in the way. Um, you're, You're brilliant. And, you know, surround yourself with the right people that are gonna affirm you, they're gonna tell you the truth, but they're going to affirm you in the best way possible and move higher. Because when you do that, you inspire the rest of us to do that. And there's no greater gift, I think, than um, any one of us can give. I think Mother Teresa said that, um, I'm going to botch it up, but it's something along the lines of lighting someone else's candle. <laughs> so people might know it, the better quote. But don't be afraid to light someone's candle. And no one takes anything else away from you by having their candle lit. We all deserve to shine. So shine boldly and bravely and brilliantly. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming on. Pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you. (laughs) So so in in, uh, future episodes of The Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals. Uh, I haven't done this in a year, so I can't remember everything else I say. But please, uh, if you like this show, give us a good review. On uh, We're on all our major screaming, streaming platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify. Uh, if you're listening, we, are, we do have our episodes published on YouTube. And if you have suggestions or feedback, uh, please send us an email at wecreatetruth at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.